الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله وصفيه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله سبحانه وتعالى بحبيبه الأمة وجاهد صلى الله عليه وسلم في سبيل ربه حتى أتاه اليقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون بدين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وإن خير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار نعوذ بالله سبحانه وتعالى من البدع ومن الضلال ومن النار آمين All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe, the creator of the heavens, the earth, whatever between and within them. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that we worship. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy to be worshipped. He subhanahu wa ta'ala created us from Adam, created Adam from a sounding clay, and he subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguishes between us on one criterion, taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayuha al-nasu inna khalaqanakum min dhakari wa unza wa ja'alnakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqafum. O humans, we created you from a single male and female, Adam and Eve. And we made you into nations and groups and families. So you may know each other. The best among you in the sight of the Lord are the most righteous. Peace and the blessings, Abu Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of the best, the most righteous. Imam al-Muttaqeen wa Sayyid al-Mursaleen sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa ba' dear respected brothers, sisters, elders, children. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, once again we meet for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sake, we come for Salatul Jum'ah to submit ourselves to our Lord and this in itself is a great ni'mah that entails us or needs us to say Alhamdulillah, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be able to say Alhamdulillah in itself is a blessing that needs us to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, once again we are coming, we are alive, we are healthy, we are given more chances to live, to make some adhkar, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to repent from our sins and to accumulate as much of good deeds as we can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we started last week talking about the best job that distinguished the Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhim and made them unique and made them the best of the generations ever, which is the job of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because they took the prophetic mission, the prophetic job, da'wah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, to convey the call of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, to spread it around first by applying the sunnah in their lives, and then the actions of the sunnah 
and the Quran will be translated into good actions and good manners and characteristics and then they deal with each and every one the same conveying the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why they have become the best of the generations as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِنْ مَنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech from those who convey the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who invite others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do righteous actions and they say we are among the Muslims and this applies first to Sahaba from Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to the tabi'een, the tabi'i tabi'een and all generations who take this mission, the prophetic mission and they convey it to the people. So why we should convey the word of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah to others as we say this is the way of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is the prophetic way and as we all know Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is no messenger coming after him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's why he said بَلِّغُوا عَمِّي وَلَوْ آيَةٍ convey from me even if it's just one ayah if it is just one hadith, just convey it, learn it, practice it, and then give it to others. That's why he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also gives us a good hadith that Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan narrates, the best among you are those who study the Quran and teach the Quran. So the criterion to be the best, to study and learn the Quran first, and if you stop there, you are not the best. You have to transfer what you have learned and give it and teach it to others. Then you become the best as Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So why should we take this mission? And taking the mission when we say we take the mission of da'wah, we give the call, we convey the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mean that we have to be imams, scholars. Any Muslim or Muslimah, anything they learn, they have to give it to others. And living in a non-Muslim country, it becomes almost an obligation for each and every single Muslim living in a non-Muslim country to give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as we said Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he loves humanity sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was sent as a mercy to everyone sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he likes to save each and every one from Jahannam. As we mentioned that the boy who was serving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he got sick and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam visited him and then he said, if you say la ilaha illallah, I will guarantee Jannah for you. And the boy looks to his father and his father said, obey Abu Qasim, obey Muhammad. And then he says, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah and he passes away. And the Sahaba will say, when you see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam getting out of the house and you see the smile on his face sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will realize that something very good happened, just happened. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alhamdulillahi alladhi anqadahu min al nar All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who just saved him from Jahannam. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to humanity to help us. If we just get an example, if we are in a building and that building is on fire and we know, some of us know the exit, the fire exit, how to exit the building to the outside. And I just know the routes and the stairs. And I take the stairs and I'm out. And after I get out, I realize that no one else could do what I did because they don't know the way to exit. And the build building was on fire and it was destroyed and everyone else except me died in the building. So how do I feel? I didn't guide anyone. If I talk to anyone in that building, I should have saved some people with me. So is that good, the way I acted? Is it considered selfishness? Or it is considered smartness or intelligence? That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the adab and the torment that he subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the kuffar, that those who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا سَوْفَ نُصْلِيهِمْ نَارًا كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوكُ الْعَذَابِ Those who do not 
believe in our signs, in our prophets, we will put them into the fire until their skin get burned out. And we will replace their skin with a new skin, and we will put them again into torment and into adab until the day of Yawm al Qiyamah. So when we read that ayah, and we have empathy for those who do not accept Islam, and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, anyone who comes to me from any other way other than Islam, it will not be accepted from him. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْقَاصِرِينَ So I should have this empathy towards anyone, any human. Giving da'wah is not just for Muslims. We give da'wah for Muslims to remind each other of ni'am Allah alayna. The blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we should give da'wah to non-Muslims to save as much people as we can from Jahannam. And we should have that empathy. That's why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best of those who gave da'wah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had that empathy. He had that love sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to each and everyone sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's one reason why we should give da'wah. To have that empathy. And also we give da'wah. If we go just and, and talk about the characteristic of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Quran is filled with many situations when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is almost killing himself out of grief and sorrow for those who do not come to Islam. If you don't remember when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking to the chiefs of Mecca who did not say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in the beginning of da'wah and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hoped they come to Islam but they did not come. He took a long time talking to Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl, and Utba, Shayb, all these, Umayyah ibn Khalaf, all these. And then Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu anhu comes to him, the blind Sahabi Abdullah. And he wants to speak to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet was so much busy with those, thinking they will come to Islam. And he took a long time, and he did not give, give the time to Abdullah. And he frowned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah didn't see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam frowning or being upset because he is blind. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has seen this and Allah pictured this in a surah and it has become for all of us عَبَسَ وَتَوَلَّ أَنْ جَاءَهُ الْأَعْمَى وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ أَوْ يَذَّكَّرُ فَتَنْفَعَهُ الذِّكْرَى أَمَّا مَنْ اسْتَغْنَى فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَّ وَأَمَّا مَنْ جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى وَهُوَ يَخْشَى فَأَنْتَ عَنْهُ تَلَهَّى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you are spending so much time with these that they have been misguided. They have been misguided away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a sahabi, a poor blind man coming to you seeking guidance. And you don't spend time with him seeking those people's pleasure. Those people will never come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, another one says in the Quran, says, لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ أَلَّا يَكُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ Muhammad, you are almost killing yourself out of grief that those people do not come to Islam. Why he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is doing this? Because he loves for others what he loves for himself. Because he is the one who said, if you believe in Allah on the last day, you should love for your brother what you love for yourself. And then Imam ibn Rajab, al-Hanbali, rahimahullah, he said in this hadith, Brother means brother in humanity. It's not a Muslim brother. You love for a brother or a sister in humanity. Whatever you love for yourself, then your iman is complete. So this is number one reason for us to call for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have that empathy and love for each and every human around us. And we think and we believe in Allah that if we do good, we are going to Jannah. So we want to accompany and take with us to Jannah as many people as we can. Number two, if we know the reward of da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be pushed to give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we know that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after we said the ayat, who is better than speech, for those who give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, when he sent him, radiallahu anhu, to meet the Jewish delegation. And he told him, Ya Ali, first start giving them da'wah. Call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By Allah, Ya Ali, if one single person comes to Allah through you, 
is better than this dunya and what it contains. Another narration, it is better than the best of the red camels. Red camels, it was the best thing they had at that time. So the reward of da'wah or getting someone to the doubt of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is humongous. That's why we said Sahaba left Mecca and Medina because they knew they can accumulate tawab in Mecca and Medina, but if they go out and give da'wah to Allah, as Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man da'a ila huda, whoever guides to Islam, kana lahu min al-ajri mithlu ma, ma, mithlu ma yaqoonu bihi, aw fi ma'na al-hadid, whoever guides to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will take reward from Allah, the same reward of those who come to Allah because of him or her, without decreasing the reward. So the Sahaba, they knew that, the reward of da'wah to Allah and calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is big. That's why they spread around. That's why they call for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they spend everything they had, money, time, everything, just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deserve the stamp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhum. Aqulu qawli hadha. Astaghfirullah wa lakum. Astaghfirullah inna wa lakumullah. الحمد لله رب العالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وحبيبه وبعد calling to Allah سبحانه وتعالى is a mission that requires many characteristics for those who will take that as a mission the dua of the Muslim who is going to call for Allah سبحانه وتعالى before he or she calls they have to practice what they call people for first. First, we work on ourselves, working hard. Sahaba Ridwan alayhim, they worked hard with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require you and me to memorize the whole Quran or to memorize the whole Bukhari and Muslim. No, some of the Sahaba, even Sahaba, did not complete the Quran first. And as we know, they used to memorize the Quran in very long time. They take long time. As, as they say, we used to take a few ayahs from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we go and learn them and practice them. And then we come back to learn another <coughs> ayah or a few ayahs. That's why it took them long time to memorize surahs like Surah Al-Baqarah. Took them months and months and maybe years to memorize one single surah because their memorization was different from our memorization. They knew what does it mean how to preserve the Quran and to memorize the Quran. They memorize it by memory first, then they study it, then they apply whatever they can see in the Quran in their lives. That's why we can see this. And some of them, Ridwanullah alayhim, Sayyidina Samra ibn Junduk, and others, they would say, we used to come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would teach us Iman first. What is Iman? To believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His angels, the prophets, and the books, Yawm al Qiyamah, the decree of Allah al Qada wal Qadr. And then after we learn our Aqeedah, as Muslims, we know the oneness of Allah, we know the prophethood of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we learn the Quran. And when we learn the Quran, after we learn the Iman, our Iman increased with the Quran. This is very important. We have to take this into consideration. We used to learn Iman, and then we learn the Quran, and then our Iman increases with the Quran. What do we do nowadays? We do the opposite. The Muslim community is doing the opposite of what the Sahaba Ridwanullah used to do. That's why our situation is also the opposite. We are not on the same route of Sahaba Ridwanullah we push our kids to memorize the Quran. First, memorization. Arabs and non-Arabs. And even if they don't know the language of the Quran, they memorize it. And then after a couple of years, they forget it. So our goal has become memorization of the Quran. My goal has become, I need my son or daughter to be a hafiz, so I go to Jannah. And we misunderstand the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you have a hafiz in the family, 
he or she will take the family to Jannah. Yes, but the Hafiz means does not just memorize the Quran. We have to know the meaning of the Quran, not just this. We have to apply the Quran in our lives. So this is very important. We are going the opposite direction of Sahaba to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu anhum. We learn the Quran first and then later we teach our children aqeedah and iman. That's why some of the youth who memorize the Quran will have doubts in their faith. They memorize the Quran, but they have doubts in Allah, in the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, in Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because we did not lay the foundations first. We started with the walls and the structure and the roof, and we forgot the foundations. What are the foundations? Aqeedah, strong Aqeedah. This is what we have to take care of first. If my son doesn't want to memorize the Quran, I shouldn't push him or her too much. First, teach them La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. What does it mean? Then, when you get them the Quran, they will get the Iman as Sahaba Allah alayhim did and try to be engaged in the community to give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, support any da'wah efforts, support the organizations that are going around the, the world and giving da'wah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have time, you can give volunteering. If you have money, you can donate. If you don't have anything to do, just make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps those who give da'wah and insha'Allah forgives you for not doing it. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ويكم استغفروا إنه الغفور الرحيم اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا ما أسرنا وما أعلمنا ما أنت أعلم به منا أنت المقدم وأنت المقدم وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم ارحم آبا أنا وأمهاتنا كما ربونا صغار اللهم أحينا حياة السعداء حياة من تحب بقاء توفنا وفات السعداء وفات من تحب لقاء اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولكل من له حق علينا يا رحم الرحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بعد والإحسان إيداء القربة ينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي عنكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة وحي على الفلاح